What was huge for us recently was getting uh, both Eric Sprott and Earth Labs to, to finance us, uh, amongst some other um, investors in this um, $4.9 million finance. So very exciting times for us. Jordan Black, what's going on? Thanks for having me again, Andy. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Appreciate you coming up on board and agreeing to an interview. Ramp Metals has been going through all positive a lot last couple of months. We wanted to do when the news was breaking, but there was more news breaking. So we wanted to get all the news out there and then to chat all about it. So get us up to speed. You're gold focused now and all the uh, the money you've raised, raised in Eric Sprott. Yeah, look, it's been a, a fast two months. We, uh, we made the discovery, I think it was on, on June 18th or around that time. Um, yeah. Very, very high grade, um, 73.55 grams per ton over seven and a half meters um, with some silver in there. And then we also, three kilometers away, uh, had some nice sniffs of gold of uh, one gram per ton here and there in, in each of the holes. So that was really exciting. Um, the property is showing great mineralization. Um, we have four holes in our initial drill program. So we're, we're really excited to get back out there. And um, what was huge for us recently was getting uh, both Eric Sprott and Earth Labs to, to finance us, uh, amongst some other um, investors in this um, $4.9 million financing. So very exciting times for us. Yeah. And again, congratulations. And I just comment about what you can. How did you get Eric Sprott and some of these uh, big names? <laughs> on board? Yeah. So most of them reached out to us uh, with the no, exception of, <laughs> yeah, with the exception of Eric, though, um, I'm good friends with uh, the Earth Labs guys. Uh, they were previous, uh, previously Gold Spot, and now Earth Labs is their investment arm. Um, so I, I helped them go public back in 2019 and I actually was on their team. So I, I built a good relationship with Denis, uh, their CEO and, and CJ there on their team. And, um, Denis was the first one who called me after this. I got that, uh, that discovery hole and we started talking for a couple of weeks and he made the introduction to Eric. So, uh, very thankful for that. And Eric really likes high grade gold. And I remember even back in the day, Eric would say he, you always looked for like hundred gram meters, right? And uh, we had, I think it was about five hundred and fifty gram meters on this hole. So, um, very exciting to to them and us at the same time. Yeah, that's a great story, my friend. I remember the first time we talked, and this was a good seven months ago. You were getting ready to go public. Uh, I believe you went public in December. So that was the first time we talked was in October. So that was about ten months ago, I would say. Yeah, we were raising for the RTO at that time for nickel play. Um, we have this regional structure that looks like an eye, and we always compared it to the Nova Bollinger eye out of Australia that our advisor, Mark Bennett, uh, sold for like $1.8 billion. So we were all like curious, okay, are we going to get nickel copper similar to him? Uh, and also similar to the old Rotten Stone mine, which is a long trend as well, that put out some of the highest grade nickel uh, in the country. But they were, um, they had some kickers of like nine grams per ton of PGs and gold as well. So we always thought, okay, maybe we, we might get a little bit of, of gold in there. And, and when we shot it with the bit. XRF gun, yeah, <laughs> um, it, it did come up with traces of gold and, and we found some gold at the surface. So that was our first clue, actually. When, when we went out there in October, um, prior to going public, we did, we cut our drill pads because our thing was, we always wanted to put money in the ground right away and get the drills turning basically on day one of trading. So we're out there in the fall cutting drill pads. And with, when we flew over to go to our main conductor in the middle, we saw uh, on our east conductor, there was bedrock outcrop there. So um, after we cut our, our main drill pad, we went back there and took some chip samples. Uh, and we only took, I think like 16 samples total, but two of them came by like five grams per ton and one gram per ton of gold. So we're like, we might as well put a wildcat hole here as well um so we're we're chasing nickel and uh fast forward to the go public stage we went public actually in march and uh we didn't get our assays back uh until that friday night in june and uh yeah 
pleasantly surprised with the gold. So it's it's just it's been surreal. It's been quite the whirlwind. So let me ask you this here, though. Um, uh, really, two things that are at the top of my mind. Now you've raised, you have the, you have the holes, you have the gold, you have the resources, and now you've raised a ton of money. What's next? What is yeah, that? So we have big plans in the works here. So um, first step is going out and doing a, a really big surface mapping program. We want to map this this potential fault take more surface samples? Does it come out at surface anywhere else? Um, what can we see? Any any clue to help us line up the drill? Um, and then in the fall slash winter, call it October, November, we, we'll, we'll mobilize the drills and we'll probably aim at somewhere between 4,000 and 5,000 meters and uh, really step out from that original hole. Uh, one thing the geos did that I was very impressed is they left the, the casing in each hole. So Step one on the drill program will be drilling that uh, 300 meter hole down to maybe five or 600 meters. So uh, just drilling so, fuller further. Yeah, because that was open at depth. So we don't know Great. where the gold really ends and what we'll get into. Um, <laughs> That's music there's, <laughs> uh, there's been some theories that maybe we're kind of on a foot wall of, of a bigger deposit. So hopefully we'd see more visualization as, as we get deeper. Um, and then we'll step out um, from the discovery hole. And uh, obviously, there's a couple other targets on our property that we'll, we'll probably hit at the end of the program just to cover our, all our bases. There. Okay. So as you know, stock moves and shareholders want the stock to move. There's, and stock moves because of news coming out, good news coming out. So my question to you is, is obviously it can be specific, but just to stay tuned, you'll have a lot of good news knocking on wood coming out over the next few months, correct? Correct. Yeah, we'll have, as I just mentioned, uh, you have this, uh, the boots on the ground program, yep. you have the mobilizing the drill, maybe we fit in a couple other things, a couple other surprises in there. Um, but really, um, the proof is in the drill. So that's the main event. And we'll work our way towards that and, and hopefully uh, do it as soon as possible. Um, we have probably one of the biggest war chests uh, around right now. So we really yep. want to put that to use. And uh, the majority of it into the grounds. Excellent. So the next um, question I have really is like, like you just mentioned, you have a significant war chest. Um, how are you going to protect retail investors such as myself, if you would, um, yeah, to, with some regards to managing all of that, as well as uh, dilution and that sort of thing moving forward? Yeah, so a great thing. Um, what we did is um, the charity flow through for one. Um, let's not mistake that with normal flow through. There's two types of flow through. Um, you just have your straight flow through where investors can essentially just sell it after four months. But we did charity flow through, uh, which we work with Pear Tree, uh, call it a wealthy individual, uh, will sell the, their shares at 78 cents to charity and then immediately sell it to someone like Eric at 55 cents. So we we got a one point four three spread on on our money there, uh, non dilutive. So it's essentially like an extra eight hundred uh, that protects shareholders from dilution. So that that's a great tax incentive incentive that the government still has. Um, so we're making use of that. And uh, another protection around that is uh, we have till December twenty twenty five to spend that money um, into the ground. So it all has to go on site, and that's what really gives shareholders comfort. Got it. That's the music to my ears. And also I thought it's very creative. Um, if you would, and that's something that I I've heard of, but wasn't very familiar with. So it's not something that's done a lot. Yeah. Look, I, I learned a lot, really got educated over the last month closing this financing. Um, I always was negative towards flow through, um, cause I wasn't aware of the charity end of it. So uh, now that I, I really understand charity, it, it, I, I think every company should do it. And it's non-dilutive free money, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Music to my ears. Yeah. Jordan, another thing that was really, um, this is a double-edged sword. When I met the team, um, you and your geologist and, and more of the team, when we first spoke, again, back in, is November or December? Yep. Um, I really liked and this is a double-edged sword. There's a yin and a yang to this. There's a positive and a negative. I like that the team is very young because 
when you're young, you have a lot of optimism, you have a lot of energy and you want to do things right and perfect to appease, you're not jaded, if you would. And I didn't feel at the time. And then, well, I didn't say feel. I know that you guys are not a lifestyle company, if you would. But the yeah. downside is experience. So what have you done recently to add some experience? Because you're going to need mentors. Um, that sort of thing, just navigating this whole, it's not an easy thing putting a gold mine or nickel mine into. Yeah, look, that's a really great question. I think um, you and I had the same thought, even when I became the CEO of Ramp, I wanted, even though we're a younger team, I wanted to build strong mentorship and advisors. Um, so the first person we brought on was Mark Bennett. And originally for a nickel expert, because he sold his, his nickel company. But later I discovered he also, um, I guess, discovered 15 million ounces of gold in his career. So he's very experienced and he's actually going to fly in uh, to site in September, uh, go over the, the um, go over the core, uh, previous core with, with the guys and really it's helped us plan this, um, this, I guess, next drill program. So yeah, we have Mark, uh, Richard Murphy as well, who sold this, uh, company, uh, recently and, and Scott McLean, another veteran in the field. So I feel we have a wealth of knowledge mentoring us. And, uh, when it, when it comes to getting to the next step, uh, my background in the past, before I got into venture capital and exploration was actually building infrastructure for mine. So, uh, I did feasibility studies and, and actually built the roads to get to these sites. So, um, I'm hoping as things progress, obviously we want to see the next set of results, uh, in the drill program, but that may lead to bringing on uh, more experience of maybe someone that could actually um, build a mind to, to help or had, had experience building a mind uh, come on the team. That was my, kind of goes into my next question. How, what's the, how far out are we from a feasibility, feasibility, feasibility study? Well, typically, um, if you look at Serious Resources, which was Mark's company and, and Great Bear Resources, um, it's about a two and a half year to four year program um, to get to kind of that economics where yeah. majors actually are really interested in taking you out or you decide to go feasibility and, and build it yourself. Right. So right. Um, I think if we were rock stars and everything went according to plan, uh, oh, my goal is to do it like Mark, Mark Bennett. He did it in two years from the discovery holes. It was two years, six months, and a day. Um, so <laughs> if we can get a, get along uh, that timeline, obviously that's a super rapid timeline, but that's that's the target. Uh, and then Great Bear, four years. So uh, anywhere in the middle there, uh, obviously shareholders would be happy. Got it. Okay. Anything else that you'd like to say to the viewers and listeners um, before we wrap things up? And again, it's a very exciting time for you as a, the CEO, as well as uh, Ramp Metals. But yeah, sure. Anything, parting thoughts there? Yeah, I would say just stay tuned. Uh, keep, keep in touch with our newsletter. We, we're getting out um, as soon as possible to site to do a, a huge fault mapping program, bedrock mapping program. Um, so that's really exciting for us. Um, and then stay tuned for the drill program. Um, really, the proof is always in the drills. So we have four holes right now. Obviously, um, we luck with Lady Luck was on our side on on the first four. So uh, hopefully that continues with the next twenty. Okay. And how do investors find you? Where you traded? Yeah. So we're our symbols ramp R A M P. Um, so we always like to joke around that we're we're ramping up exploration. And uh, our website is rantmetals.com. So you can, you can fill out your contact info there and, and we'll send you uh, updates as soon as we get them. Excellent. Jordan Black, Ramp Metals, is uh, great having you on. And I can't uh, wait to see what else is in store for you in Ramp Metals. This is coming to, it seems like this is coming to be uh, one of those stories. So I'm very pleased to see that. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Andy. Have a great Appreciate day. It. You too.